Hi folks, hope you're all well. So just a quick video before I get the rods out, uh, basically about my ethos on rigs, my thoughts on rigs. Now, for me, one of the main problems I see with rigs is the bait is too close to the hair. Uh, not enough separation for me. I'm targeting big fish, and when I say big fish, most of the fish I'm fishing for are over 30 pounds. Uh, I like to hunt the biggest fish I can really, 40 and 50 pounds is my intended targets. Now, I think you can cater for those fish uh, with the rigs and the baits you're using. So first of all, for me, a long shank hook. Now, long shank, straight point, hand sharpened hook. For me, every time a long shank's gonna turn quicker and prick more fish. Now, also the length of the hair, vitally important, even in solid bags. Now this is actually my solid bag rig. And you can see there's probably it's an inch long hair on there. Now, look at the separation that you get from that hook. You know, it's allowed the freedom of movement to do what its intended purpose is. And that's drop to the fish's mouth and hook them. Now, I think when you've got these rigs where the hook bait is attached to the shank of the hook, the bend of the hook, yes, they will catch fish. Yes, they do catch a lot of fish, but I think that's all relative. I think the big, rare, wily fish want a bit of separation between their bait and the hook. And I think that makes them more comfortable with the bait because, you know, they're not coming in and, and catching on the first attempt. We've seen this from the underwater videos. Now, I think it might pick that that rig up two or three times before you, you know, and do you before you, you get the bite. So I think if you've got a really tight hair and it's off the bottom, I just think the chances of you getting done and, and spooking the fish are higher. Now, I think if you've got a longer hair and that carp can take that bait in its mouth, and feel comfortable with that bait and it will throw it back further. And when it realizes there's a problem, then as it ejects the bait, the, uh, the, the gap, the separation between the point of the hook and the bait is then exaggerated. It spits the, the bait and not the hook. And what I mean is that when I'm playing a fish, I can see this hook bait waving around on the outside of his lips for the duration of the fight. Now, I think if that hook bait is stuck to the point of the hook, he can use that hook that hook bait with sucking and blowing to dislodge that hook now if he's got a long hair that maintains being on the outside of his mouth the duration of the fight and i don't think he can use that to dislodge the hook now another thing the very biggest lead i can get my hands on all right uh the lead has to eject so if i'm using a lead clip i'll tie the leads on with pva tape and if i'm using a solid bag it will be a drop off inline lead and that will be a four or five ounce now obviously we don't strike the fish now like we used to float fishing we used to set the hook manually and you know back in the good old days but now it's done on the weight of the lead so the other thing that you have to take into consideration is the weight of the lead is drastically reduced in the medium which is water so if you can use a four or five ounce lead that is going to give you a massive hooking potential a massively improved hooking potential over a two or three ounce lead like most people are using in solid bags. So those are my thoughts. That's my rig, not even any shrink tubing. I don't think you need it in a solid bag with an intern diet and a long shank and a straight point. All right, a very, very attractive food bait um, that I know they, they're gonna come back for time and time again. A rubber maggot is a hair stop. That's just my little thing I do. I don't really like a hair stop. And uh, two or three bits of putty to make that hook link nice and heavy to drop in the fish's mouth. Hope this helps.